Okay, I'm here to talk about Sensu. So Sensu is a monitoring solution, uh, similar in vein to Nagios, if you know that tool. And I'd like to suggest today that it's a viable option to monitor your OpenStax. And it's actually what uh, we're using. So the state of OpenStack monitoring. Uh, right now, it's a grab bag. Uh, there really isn't any one monitoring solution that's uh, in OpenStack itself. So from an implementer standpoint, you really got to roll your own. Uh, right now, Nagios and its forks seem to be the dominant players uh, in filling out that monitoring story. Um, and there's also a teleometer, right? So uh, from what I can tell, you know, that was designed to do measurements, right? And so uh, it'll measure bandwidth, it'll measure uh, system information. But traditionally, there really hasn't been a monitoring piece. But it seems like it could fit in there, right? So uh, actually, uh, from what I've read uh, with Havana, they are bringing in some monitoring. So there's a tool called uh, Synapse, Synapse uh, that works with AWS CloudWatch. That's being brought into Telemeter, and that actually will bring in some, some monitoring stuff. So I haven't actually gotten to look at that to see the details, but that is interesting. And so I think we should look out for that. But until then, we kind of have to roll our own. Uh, some things about Solometer, though, um, it, it, right now it seems like it requires Mongo, and it's really bulky. I mean, the thing is designed to capture a lot of metrics. So I pulled this from uh, Rantis blog post. So it, on this post they say, uh, average production system is going to generate 240 gigs of data per month. So that's a lot of data, I think. So I think um, even if you were to go with Solometer, um, you might want something a little more lean. So in this case, a Sensu or a Nagios. So what is Sensu? Uh, it's a monitoring framework, a lot like Nagios, but in addition to that, it's a metrics bus. So it gives you a lot more functionality in terms of querying your infrastructure and sending that information to kind of wherever you want. So I'll talk about more, uh, more about metrics later and specifically how it can help with OpenStack. So the backstory. So um, I worked at Sonian uh, about a year and a half ago, and that's where Sensu was written, actually. So it was written by a guy there, Sean Porter. And <laughs> this was us using Nagios. Um, Sonian is a, uh, it's a cloud company. They do email archiving. And uh, with their solution, they have a, a stack per customer in a sense. So we would we had 20 different stacks that were distributed um, on AWS. And for each of those stacks, we had a Nagio server you know, that, of course, provided us alerts when stuff fell over. And it was just really challenging. Um, when I came onto the DevOps team, it was the, the primary sore spot was monitoring. Uh, one of the big problems with it was we had elastic infrastructure. And so whenever we would add an instance we would have to restart Nagios. So not only would we have to restart Nagios in that stack, but we had a hub and spoke model with all our Nagios monitoring. So we also had to restart the centralized Nagios server. So that was a pain in the butt. We saw lots of too many, or excuse me, lots of false positives. Um, the staff was kind of bent out of shape about it, really. You know, I mean, no one likes to get a page late at night, especially if it's wrong. We were seeing a lot of that with Nagios. We're seeing strange scheduling issues. Now, I think we could have tackled the Nagios issues that we face, because a lot of people use it with great success. But we kind of just couldn't get over the fact that we didn't like Nagios a lot. And so we were emotionally blocked. We, we weren't making any progress on it. And so that's why we decided to write our own tool, mostly Sean. And that's where Sensu comes in. So. Uh, with our product, we relied heavily on Rabbit. We loved Rabbit there. I mean, it was the tool that allowed us to be loosely coupled. It did great. And so when Sean was thinking about a monitoring solution, Rabbit came immediately to mind. Some of the goals with Sensu, uh, we really wanted the automatic client registration. We didn't want to have to restart our service when we added infrastructure. 
we want it to be configuration management aware. So the way Sensu is written, it just makes certain choices that makes it easy to manage. Uh, for example, it has a conf D directory for all its um, checks and other objects that you need to work with. So it's really easy just to write out specific files per configuration aspect. You know, it's not like one monolithic config file. We wanted something that was hackable. It was hard for us to get into Nagios and know what was going on. We wanted something that was very simple. You could just see, what, see it right away. And we wanted something with a really good API. Um, and Sensu, Sensu accomplishes that. So the Sensu stack, uh, I talked about Rabbit. So that, that's our message bus. Uh, Ruby. So it uses uh, Ruby, uh, specifically Ruby Event Machine. So it never blocks on I.O. And it uses Redis uh, for the persistence layer. So it uses Unix principles uh, in terms of its construction. It's very modular. And it's MIT licensed. So high level, it's a lot like um, Nagios, but it actually has an agent, whereas Nagios typically doesn't. So you have an agent running on all of your clients. You have a server. And then you have basic kind of alerting principles, like a check, which actually makes an assertion against your infrastructure. You know, is this the way I want it to be? And then a handler, which will take <laughs> the results of that assertion and do something with it, like send you an email or you know, make a call to the PagerDuty API. So the workflow is largely based around Rabbit. Um, so the Sensu server um, publishes a check. So the server is the brain. So it has a list of check checks. And as it's rolling along, it just pushes out checks onto the Rabbit queue. And on each client, you just specify um, what it should be subscribing to. So when it goes onto the exchange, it just fans out to all the client's queues. They pick up the check, they execute it, execute it, and then they take the output and they put it back on the results queue, which the Sensu server is listening for that. It takes the results and it gives it to the handlers that were specified in the check. So the checks are, they basically copy, uh, copy the Nagios NRPE plugin model. So it's basically just, it just shells out. So uh, when you run a check, you get both the, the exit code so 0, 1, 2, or 3, and also um, the string, and exactly what the Nagios plugins do. So that's very handy. So if you have you know, uh, existing investment in Nagios plugins, you don't lose them by moving to Sensu. So here's uh, how you specify a check. Uh, that directory at the top is that conf D directory, and that's where you can drop checks in. And then when you restart the Sensu client, it'll be there. So Sensu uses JSON for all its config, which is real nice. And pretty much it uses JSON wherever it can. It uses JSON to wrap metrics. It uses um, JSON for messaging. So in this check, this is a uh, check disk check. So it's calling, in that command line, it's calling uh, the check disk plugin. And it's saying, warn me once the disk is 85% full and throw a crit if it's 95% full. This particular check will get sent to all the subscribers, and then it has the email and pager duty handlers. And it's going to run every 60 seconds. Or I should say with the checks, too, you can, you can either opt to do a centrally managed way to go, or you can uh, actually have the checks just run standalone on the clients themselves. So Sensu plugin. Uh, so this is a convenience wrapper. So if you want to write your own checks, you can just import from this object, or inherit from it, rather. And it just gives you some convenience methods there. So um, you can easily specify options on your check. So if you want certain flags so that when you call your plugin, of course, you can specify the parameters. So it actually uses um, ops codes, mixlib CLI. Um, if you've ever written any knife plugins, um, it's exactly what happens there. So it's very easy to use. Uh, and then you just find some methods that it's going to look for, right? So just to find a run method and, and do your logic in there. Then you can just say OK. So if you call OK, it's just going to exit 0 with a string. If you call crit, it's going to exit 3, and then also with a string. OK, demo.
Okay, so um, I wrote a wrapper cookbook for uh, Sensu. So it makes it really easy to provision Sensu, actually. So I have uh, a virtual machine running uh, with Sensu. So at the top screen, I'm tailing the Sensu client log. So this VM is running Sensu server and Sensu client, but I'm just watching the client log. So it's basically just going to be testing against itself in this situation. And I have a check to make sure that the NTPD process is running. So right now you can see it rolling by, check procs OK, and then it's found one process command NTPD. Let's see, so I want to show you the dashboard. So here's what the Sensu dashboard looks like. So right now, you know, all clear, nothing's going wrong. All right. Okay, so I stopped the NTP service, NTPD service. You can see it's now gone critical. If we pop over to our dashboard, okay, we got a crit. So at this point, uh, an event has occurred, so this is where your handlers would then take over. So whatever you've specified uh, in the event would then kick off. So an email, contact pager duty, really whatever. The sky's the limit. Oh, and so I actually um, uh, published this to GitHub, too. If you want to play with Sensu, you can just pull this down and uh, do a Vagrant up, and that'll get you going. So handlers and metrics. So this is the piece that I think is uh, particularly interesting uh, to OpenStack uh, provisioners. Um, so Sensu makes it really easy to write your own checks, and, and this is where it acts as a metric Metric, metrics bus also, excuse me. So you can write a check, uh, find out some information on your system, and you can send it to Sensu, right? And so um, for us, we can choose to find out OpenStack information, right? So if you want to know the amount of tenants or the amount of resource usage per tenant, you could potentially grab that information and send it through Sensu. So the different handlers, there's the pipe handler, which is basically um, what I just showed you. So if you get an alert, you know, go off to PagerDuty, make an API call. There's a metric handler, and that actually doesn't care about the exit status of what's happening. It's just saying, hey, I'm going to get a bunch of data, and I'm going to do something with it. And then there's the AMQP handler, and that's basically like a router. So uh, whatever came in on the queue, it's just going to fire it off to a different queue. So it just passes it along. So that can be handy if you have a another consumer down at the end of your workflow. So one thing you can put at the end of your workflow is graphite. So there's quite a few community metrics checks out there if you're interested in trying to uh, monitor your open stack. So here's some uh, things that I thought of that could be interesting in terms of gathering metrics. Logins to Horizon, uh, the amount of API calls, CPUs per tenant. Um, we've actually just started getting into this space. Um, we wrote a one metrics check just to um, deliver uh, tenant resource usage, and we piped that into Graphite. So some nice things about Sensu. Um, it uses omnibus packaging, so um, even though it's Ruby, it's discreetly installed. It's embedded, so it ne will never conflict with any system Rubies that you have installed. It's got really nice logging. Um, it uses JSON there also, and it's got a really active community. And that is it. Any questions?